I'm Algernon Cash, and you're locked in. Welcome back. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, I think I've got an, all, as always, I think every episode is great, but I think I've got another great episode for you all. Um, as you know, I always try to bring in a expert or a community leader to talk about what's going on in their backyard and what's happening in their environment. Right now, if you look at any major news story, um, the main story of the day is the spread of COVID right now, and we are starting to see um, an increase in, in the virus spread. You know, last week we had Dr. Van on, who's the Guilford County Public Health Director. Over in Guilford County, they're seeing as many as 250 cases per day. Um, we're seeing record-breaking numbers, not, a, not only across the state of North Carolina, but we're seeing it across the country. Um, and when you look at a number of states, whether it be Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, a number of states right now in New York are putting in further restrictions, um, restricting um, businesses from um, capacity uh, uh, limits and other things to sort of prevent the spread of this virus. And so today I wanted to put together a conversation and talk about what some of our local cities are doing to not only keep residents safe, but also to make sure that we keep business owners operating in the midst of this COVID environment. So I've invited uh, Greensboro Mayor Nancy Vaughn on. Um, I'm, always, I'm always very honest with my audience. So I wanna say this, I've known Mayor Vaughn for many years. Uh, I got to know her when I was doing some work through the Triad Real Estate Building Industry Coalition. And um, just in the last, I'd say maybe last couple of weeks or so, uh, Mayor Vaughn uh, made an announcement and the city council had approved an emergency declaration um, basically putting some tighter or tougher enforcement measures in um, to, to enforce the restrictions that Governor Cooper has placed on the state through his executive order. I will admit that I made a video and maybe I reacted to the emergency declaration a bit too quick. Uh, Mayor Vaughn got in touch with me. She called me out. She said I didn't have it right. And so I wanted to get her on the show so that we could correct it for you and make sure we clarify not only what the city of Greensboro is doing, but also now Winston and so many other cities that are trying to figure out how to deal with this public health crisis that we're in the middle of. Uh, Mayor Vaughn, thank you for joining me. How are you today? I am well. Thank you for, for having me on December 1st um, to talk about this issue and other issues that are impacting our residents and our businesses. Well, you, you heard me uh, admit to my own flub here and the, the video that, that I made that I think you, we ended up connecting in the uh, Facebook group. And um, I, I tell you, when I read the, re the release and the article that came out in Fox 8, uh, the way that, that we made the video was the way that we had interpreted it. And so after that, first of all, thank you for reaching out to me. And second, thank you for being here on the show and locking in with me. Uh, but I would imagine, I mean, I watch these things so closely. I'm always watching the news, reading the news. And if, if I misunderstood it or misinterpreted, I could only imagine what, what some of the other business owners in Greensboro and, and your residents, they, they may have misinterpreted it too. So hopefully we can clarify a little bit of that today. So let, let's start there. Let's talk about the emergency declaration that you and the city council passed. And, and again, it doesn't impose new restrictions, right? It only um, puts tougher enforcement measures out to make sure that the restrictions are in place are actually being dealt with. Is that correct? Correct. So there are actually three items to what I call the enhanced emergency, state of emergency order. Um, According to the governor's order, it had to be enforced by law enforcement. And we all know that law enforcement are extremely busy these days. Regretfully, we've had 56 homicides in the city of Greensboro and violent crime is rising. That really needs to be where their attentions are. And we also don't want to criminalize people's behaviors during COVID when they're just trying to, to make a living at this point. So the very first part of this enhanced state of emergency was to allow the city manager to utilize other departments um, such as code enforcement, special events or parking enforcement, but to take it out from the law enforcement venue. Um, we don't need law enforcement put in more positions that are going to put them in controversial or um, having negative interactions with the public. So the, the, first, the first part of that allowed the city manager to utilize other staff. Obviously they have to be trained, but to utilize other, other staff. The second part of the um, emergency declaration dealt specifically with just overcrowding. So, um, you know, prior to COVID, if a 
nightclub was overcrowded, the fire department would go in and um, give them a citation for the number of people over the allowed occupancy. So we did something similar to that. If you've got, if you're allowed to have 30 people in your building and you've got 35, you would get a civil citation for $500. That is the other thing that we did. We looked at doing civil citations instead of criminal citations. Um, there's some reasoning behind that. One, um, Secretary Cohen suggested looking at civil citations instead of criminal. Um, criminal citations can only be written by the police department. And we all know that court has been closed lately and that their dockets are filling up and we don't need to put more on their dockets to do with overcrowding. The third part of the emergency order and maybe the one that's had the most significant impact at this point is um, if there is a complaint, our teams will go out and talk to the business owner and tell them what the governor's order says, what our order says, and give them a warning. If they have to come back a second time and those violations remain uncured, they can close that business immediately for 24 hours. If they go back a third time, it's 48 hours, a fourth time, it's 72 hours. The fact that we have given staff the ability to close a business has made a big difference because people were factoring in fines as a cost of doing business. It was like, well, if I'm gonna get a $500 fine, I'll just write that in my cost of doing business. So we needed to do something that was gonna have an impact. And that seems to have had the greatest impact to date. Yeah, I'm sort of curious. I mean, what, what's been the reaction from your, your business community? Um, is this something that you generally feel like the community is on board with? Are they somewhat resistant? And then also what's been the reaction from your, your residents in Greensboro? So I would say both the residents and the business community, especially the business communities who are trying to do it right, who are playing by the rules. They have been frustrated by their peers not doing the right thing by um, overcrowding or staying open late or whatever. So we have been, um, you know, we have been getting, I will, call, I will say calls of concern from um, many business owners and quite a few um, residents as well. And the, the actual complaints that you talked about, Mayor Vaughn, or I, I guess the service calls that these officials or staff officials would be going on, Walk us through that process. How, 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 did, how did those complaints originate? Where do they come into? Um, and then sort of what's the reaction from staff once that complaint comes in? So we do have a telephone number, 336-373-2640, um, where people can call if they have a concern. So, you know, this is something that is complaint generated, but the first three days, what they did even before they started any enforcement was that they went out to businesses that we've heard complaints on for the last nine months. So they went out just as a courtesy call. At this point, I don't believe they've had to fine anyone. We certainly haven't closed anyone. As people understand um, all of the items in this enhanced emergency declaration, um, compliance has been easy. It is not our goal to shut a business. It is not our goal to criminalize somebody, but it's just to stop the spread of the virus. And, in, and how closely are your actions and then obviously the actions of the council at large, how closely are those correlated with the governor's office and maybe DHHS? Are y'all sort of in constant communication or you, are, you sort of on an island of, on your own here? How does that work? So I am the chair of the Metro Mayor's Organization, and that makes up the mayors of the um, larger cities and towns. And we have been fortunate to speak with Secretary Cohen and Governor Cooper on a somewhat regular basis. Um, we obviously have contacts in both of their offices as things come up where we can reach out to them directly. And are you seeing uh, some of the other metropolitan areas here in our state, Charlotte, Raleigh, Durham, others, are they, they following suit for what, what we're seeing in Winston-Greensboro? 
They are. Um, Winston did something similar a few days ago. They did not do civil fines. They did criminal fines. Um, Asheville did something similar within the last few days. I'm speaking to um, to my uh, to my peer mayors who are also looking um, on how they can enforce the order. And do you see any? I know you you expi explicitly mentioned that you all decided to go the route of civil penalties versus criminal. Do you see pros and cons with, with either or, or other approach or? Um, I can. Um, the doing civil penalties in it for a state of emergency is kind of uncharted territory. Um, we may be taking it up to put it in an ordinance during our city council meeting this evening. Um, but I believe that ultimately the goal is to get compliance, not to punish so that um, civil penalties are still appealable. They can be appealed to, to a court, but it doesn't give somebody a criminal record, which I think is very important. We know that we can offer, we can do criminal citations. We can, you know, we can do that today. We've been able to do that all along. We were just trying to look at a more creative solution. And that was a solution that Secretary Cohen also recommended that cities and towns look at to reduce the um, interactions between law enforcement and the public at large. Makes sense. You know, Greensboro is part of Guilford County and I used to do a lot of work in Greensboro. I used to do a lot of work over in High Point when I was at JNS Cafeteria um, on a daily basis. And it, it's an interesting geographic area because you've got this county that actually encompasses two cities Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the two cities that are sort of standalone on, on their own. Uh, help us reconcile that, that geographic challenge. I mean, in, in a sense, for example, I could be a business that's just right there in the county. I'm not in Greensboro City, but my competitor across the street might be in the city, but I may be in the county. How, how do you reconcile the differences in the enforcement action? Well, we are, you know, we only enforce within the Greensboro City limits. So that, um, that's easy. We, we can only enforce in the Greensboro city limits. I will say that the um, county commissioners, uh, Commissioner Skip Alston um, is considering possibly doing some countywide ordinance. Um, you know, we, we initially, the city of Greensboro came up with a stay at home order based on stay at home orders that were being looked at throughout the state um, with my peer mayors. Um, at that point, the county commissioners decided that they would like to do a countywide stay at home order. So they actually adopted pretty much 95% of the order that we had put together. The issue came when they decided to, um, to not, um, to not extend the stay at home order and to roll into Governor Cooper's order. So that put the city and the county at odds. Um, you know, whatever we do in the future, we will make sure that there would be, if we were to decide to roll into something the county does, that they would provide us with enough notice that we could then do our standalone order if we felt it was necessary. You know, the city of Greensboro is an urban city. We have a lot of urban centers. We're different than, you know, Oak Ridge and Summerfield. And in some ways we're different than High Point. So we have different concerns that we need to consider. Do you, any anticipation that we will see something from um, the county commissioners pre-Christmas or is this coming in the new year or any ETA at all on, on the um, you should talk to Commissioner Alston about that. He has put together an ad hoc committee to study the coronavirus and what can we do to stop that spread? What can we do to minimize the spread? So it will probably, um, you know, happen when a new board is sworn in. I understand. Um, and then for my listeners, um, we did have on uh, outgoing um, Guilford County Board Chair, Jeff Phillips. He was on the show here maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, if you're interested in going and listening to that conversation, it was a really interesting conversation. Um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. The conversation is available there. 
And um, it's also archived here on the Facebook page as well. So if you want to go back and listen to, to that. Um, if you're just now joining us, you are locked in. Also locked in with me today is Nancy Vaughn, Mayor Nancy Vaughn, uh, Mayor of Greensboro. And we're just talking about what cities are doing um, to make sure they enforce some of the COVID restrictions that are designed to not only keep residents safe, but businesses and so many others. Um, you, you know, Mayor Vaughn, do you anticipate we're, we're in the middle of the holiday season? Um, all of us are trying to remain optimistic that we won't see even higher numbers, but you know, all of the public health experts are saying to be prepared for that. Um, is the city of Greensboro, are you preparing to do any tougher en enforcement or tougher restrictions that might actually be tougher than what the governor has imposed if you start to see a rise in numbers in Greensboro? And Algernon, let me, you said something that was important. We did this to keep business in business. We want our kids to go back to school. The only way we're gonna do that is to stop this virus. And that's why greater enforcement was important. Yesterday, we, um, we got a report from Cone Health. We get them Monday through Friday. And the numbers were extremely alarming. Um, you know, For the last few days, we have had an increase in the number of people hospitalized and the number of people in the ICU. Those numbers aren't slowing down. They basically said that women's hospital is approaching capacity so that they are going to have to start shuffling patients around. People need to understand that women's hospital now called the Green Valley Hospital is our field hospital. That hospital wouldn't be open if it wasn't for COVID. They had closed it and decommissioned it. As COVID began to spread, they recommissioned that hospital, but that hospital was closed. Um, and I think that's very, very important um, for people to understand. Cone is now looking at the possibility of possibly stopping elective surgeries. And I know when people hear the phrase elective surgery, they think cosmetic surgery. Um, but it goes much, much deeper than that. An elective surgery is anything that is not um, responding to imminent death, basically. It will stop joint replacements, cancer biopsies, a whole range of, of different operations and reasons why people could be hospitalized. They had done that once before and people talked about nurses being put out of, of a job. So how, you know, they would say, so how deadly could this be if they're laying off nurses, if they're laying off doctors? Well, the people who got furloughed at that point weren't trained to deal with COVID patients. They were trained to treat joint replacements and cancer biopsies and the things that would no longer happen. It doesn't mean that they could automatically go into COVID mode. And that's something very important for people to understand. No, I appreciate you sharing that. I think that's great insight and um, something even personally I, I hadn't considered it. And since you sort of pivoted a little bit more into the healthcare area, you know, nationally, we, we believe we have a vaccine. Um, they say somewhere around 20 to 30 million doses may be available at, at the start of 2021. Is, has the city of Greensboro, have you all started to proactively prepare how that vaccine would be distributed would be my first question. And then as a tag along, we also know from polls that a number of people are saying that they're terrified to, to actually take the vaccine. So how would you also convince those people that they need to take it? So, um, you know, the health department is run by the county, but certainly we will partner with the county on how they feel the vaccine should be best distributed. Um, whether or not it's through people's doctor's office or through the county health department, or if they wish to utilize, you know, a coliseum, we are prepared to work with them as they best see fit. Um, regarding the vaccine itself, initially I was a little suspect of it, and I am a type 1 diabetic, so I am in the high risk group. Um, but I spoke to my doctor about it, and their office was used as a test office for the Pfizer vaccine. And my doctor said I should take the vaccine, so I will. Um, you know, they, from what I understand, it will probably be prioritized um, to healthcare workers, first responders, people living in congregate 
care facilities, and then I guess people most at risk. So I will take the vaccine. Yeah, and I think you're you're I think there's gonna require some kind of coordinated public education between the city and the county to help residents just understand that the vaccine is safe. Because I spoke at a, a meeting yesterday and overwhelmingly the people I spoke to all said that they were they weren't taking it. They they were they were afraid. And so I think there's gonna have to be some education done. One of my last questions for you, I'm getting ready to wrap up with you, Mayor Vaughn. Um, this health crisis is starting to transform into an economic crisis. Uh, we, we know that local and state governments are under pressure. They need more financial resources. Our small business owners are under pressure. Our residents are under pressure. Some are facing eviction once this uh, moratorium ends at the end of the month. What is Greensboro doing to, to prepare for the, the economic crisis, not just the public health aspect? So, you know, earlier we talked about the restaurant bill going through the, the Senate 2410. 20, uh, I really hope that the, um, the Congress will pass the HEROES Act. Um, it did go through the House. It has been sitting over at the Senate. Um, it is really important um, that the stimulus be passed for, for our residents, for our business owners, and for our city. Um, you know, the, um, the first stimulus that was passed uh, money went directly for communities over 500,000 people. So Charlotte got an allotment, Raleigh got an allotment, Mecklenburg and Guilford got an allotment, but no money came directly to the cities. We have to get our CARES funding through the county. Um, I wish the county would be a little bit more generous, quite frankly. We are looking at a recovery of about 2.9 million out of their 93 million that they received. Um, now we have gotten some CARES funding for transit and for housing, but as far as just being able to cover our own expenditures, $2.9 million won't do it. Um, initially, we, um, we did give money to the United Way to help um, businesses that were closed down, to help the employees. We are looking um, at rent subsidies, um, you know, payable directly to landlords and other items like that. But quite frankly, we need funding. It's gotta come from somewhere. So, um, you know, it, it's gonna be very painful to balance our budget this year. We know that our priorities are public safety and then the economic recovery. Mayor Vaughn, I totally agree with you. And for my audience, um, I will tell you that, that um, uh, the, the HEROES Act, which has passed out of the House that Mayor Vaughn talked about, has really gotten caught up in partisan politics on the Senate side. And um, I know a lot of my audience might be, uh, they may bend a little bit more to the conservative nature, but I, I will tell you that if we do not support our state and local governments, not only here in North Carolina and Greensboro, but across the country, we're gonna be looking at a massive economic crisis um, if our state and local governments have to start laying people off or they're not in a position to provide critical public services. So um, I, I, would, I would also echo uh, Mayor Vaughn's um, statement and ask you to reach out to your favorite Congressman, your favorite Senator. Um, I, I know sometimes we get mirrored in these partisan politics and this partisan bickering, but right now we're in the middle of a public health and an economic crisis and we need to put the politics aside for, for just a moment and, and just focus on getting some help and aid um, to, to, to these state and local governments that are trying to navigate an unprecedented situation. So Mayor Vaughn, I wanna end our conversation on something a little bit more fun. Um, this is a little behind the scenes kind of thing. You threw me off with the background there. I thought you were sitting, <laughs> yeah. down, at, I thought you were sitting down at City Hall, but for my audience, that's a, that's a visual effect. Um, she's got a virtual background. You share it with me. I didn't even know this. The city of Greensboro actually has a place where you can download virtual backgrounds. It does. It's got great iconic places throughout the city of Greensboro. Um, you know, whether it's our wonderful parks that we, we have, the downtown skyline, um, athletic pictures where you can download um, virtual backgrounds. So right now I am working out of my house, but we do have a work session and a council session. So I'll be headed um, to the real background uh, within about an hour or so, but we do have a number of virtual backgrounds, which come in handy when the house isn't clean. No, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. That's, I, I, I need to work on getting me one. Mayor, Mayor Vaughn, I really, really appreciate you, first of all, reaching out to me and, and correcting me 
um, because it is so important that in, in this day and age, we get the right information out and people understand what's going on. And then two, I just appreciate you being here with me and, and speaking to the audience. I think they got a lot of value out of what you shared. And um, if there's anything that our show or myself can do to support the efforts of what y'all are doing in Greensboro, um, keep me on your list. And um, I may be inviting you back as, as this, this whole issue continues to evolve and we get deeper into the winter here. I would look forward to that. Thank you so much um, for taking that correction in such a good manner. I appreciate it. And thank you for allowing me to get our message across on the show. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You have a good rest of the day. Thank you again for locking thank in you. with me. Thank you. You too. All right, guys, we're going to work on trying to wrap this up. Um, it's been a busy day. I actually had Mayor Vaughn and all the triad mayors. They were on a press conference um, shortly before we did the show today. Uh, Mayor Vaughn, Mayor Joins, Mayor Baltudas over in uh, Burlington, as well as Mayor Clark in Lexington. And we were calling on Congress to pass the Restaurants Act, which is a $120 billion bill that would support restaurants and bars across the country. Um, that press conference is available. If you actually want to go take a look at the press conference and listen to some of what we talked about, you need to go to Facebook, go to Triad Food and Beverage Coalition, Triad Food and Beverage Coalition, and you can actually watch the press conference that we did earlier today with all of our Triad mayors. And I just want to say to my audience, we will not be able to navigate through this situation without you and your support. Um, I know a lot of times you hear people say that you need to reach out to your congressman, but I'm being serious. We really need um, the residents of the triad region to reach out to Congress, reach out to your senators, let them know that we need to get more financial aid, more financial stimulus through Congress so that we can support not only Greensboro, but the multitude of cities, towns, and counties and states that we have here throughout the nation. Um, if you're not a subscriber to the YouTube channel, of course, I got to remind you of that. Go to YouTube, look for Algernon Cash. Make sure you subscribe. That way you'll get a notification anytime we produce new videos. Um, if you like what you heard today, of course, you can hit like, you can share this with a friend, you can encourage them to like the page. We're producing really great content on a daily basis. Um, and as always, until next time, y'all stay locked in. <laughs>